Hi and welcome to my HP LaserJet 6P disassembly tutorial. I found this uh, printer, this laser printer, in a kind of odd way. It was actually in the middle of the street uh, with a sign uh, that you know you could take it, and it had already rained upon it. So I'm definitely not going to use it anymore, and uh, um, taking it apart. Things that we're going to find in there is probably an interesting fuser unit, switch mode power supply. This here looks like a infrared port and lots of mechanical stuff and of course the laser unit. So I'm going to take this apart right now and we'll see how it goes. Just one small word of advice before we start out. Um, Please be careful and wear goggles at all times while dismantling the thing. Um, not because I'm actually uh, worried that a laser beam is going to hit you in the eye, it's all safely powered off, but actually I'm not going to be able to dismantle everything nicely and will have to resort to violence at some point in time. And due to the construction there are going to be springs and and um, plastic pieces which are going to fly around and they can hit you in the eye and can be kind of nasty. So please be sure to wear safety goggles and then everything will be fine. So after having cracked one side open, um, we have a pretty good look on uh, the RAM extensions. I'm going to take those out here and check what kind of modules those are. So in here were two modules of the same type, 72 pin, single inline, probably Edo RAM, something like that. Um, I couldn't find any reference to the chip itself. It's a Siemens brand RAM chip with 60 nanoseconds access time as the dash 60 indicates on there. But I'm guessing it's probably very low density. I would say one of these modules probably has a meg or two, something like that. So underneath this cover it seems to get more interesting. We're entering the realm of Torx. Let's see what we find under there. Okay, now that we have it open, um, very interesting to take a look at that. Seems to be actually the main board. Has a Intel i960 chip on top, which uh, most likely is the CPU for that. I can see a crystal right here. Um, some input-output circuitry, uh, probably uh, some uh, transceivers, I would guess, and the RAM interface. Um, these here actually look like onboard RAM modules too, I'm not sure. Maybe they are flash actually and keep the program, I'm not too sure. And the infrared unit on this side here. I'm going to take it out, take the PCB out and so we can have a closer look at that. Uh, that is very interesting. Um, Actually, there is a connector on the back which slides into the printer probably to connect some peripherals. 
and on the front it actually is also accessible. I'm guessing this is um, for debugging or programming the whole uh, main CPU board. A huge gearbox. I don't really know what to do with that. Maybe it can be used in some form or another. Wow. Nice. And actually on this side we can also see a stepper motor. It um, feels quite, has a quite coarse step and I can't really get to it from here so I'm going to try to get from it from a different side. So now that I slid the top off, we can actually have a look at the more interior components. Um, some of the stuff here is interesting. You can see the stepper motor that we couldn't take out before. It now just slides out very easily. Um, we also can see the laser unit here. How laser units usually work in laser printers. Um, they have a stationary laser which produces a beam. The beam hits a uh, rotating mirror. The mirror is actually connected to a BLDC motor or something like that. And this in, uh, then um, reflects the laser beam uh, to each scan line of the page. We're going to take that apart later on in detail and take a more close look. I'm just trying to get more stuff out so we can later on take a detailed look on everything. So here is a couple of cables. Um, these here will most likely uh, go to some Paper sensors, uh, there are usually a lot of switches or infrared uh, detectors all over the laser printer to detect if there's a paper jam or if the paper is moving in order. This here is just a fan, probably for cooling the laser unit. So in here, after I took out the fan, you can see this is the switch mode power supply that I was referring to at the very beginning. It actually is a real switch here. You can uh, notice it on the two fixed positions, in and out, and um, on the clicking sound. And actually, the power goes in here, produces the voltages. Um, usually there's a high voltage um, output for uh, for the f fixator unit um, so th this produces a lot of um, heat and some internal voltages for the CPU and for the laser unit.
So this is the laser unit that I talked about earlier and indeed it actually is exactly the design that I said it was. You have the stationary laser here which produces a beam that travels down here through this optics. I don't know what that is actually for. Onto a rotating, um, rotating mirror and the mirror reflects the laser beam depending on which pixel in the actual line on the page um, you wanted to have through here. So basically the mirror rotates always and the laser is switched on and off depending on if you uh, want a charge on that piece of paper or you don't. So this is the forward feeding tray. As you can see, it consists of some transport mechanism and um, oops, some springs here. This kind of looks like an electromagnet in here. Um, I'm not really sure we are going to take that out too. And these probably go to some uh, sensors which detect if paper is actually inserted in here or not. So uh, probably this here probably is connected to a switch or a push button, something like that. And it tells the printer if there is actually a page in there or not. So I'm, I'm going to take this apart first before we move on with the printer itself. So, as I said before, this is um, the electromagnet um, that I just took out. Probably when energized it just pulls this down here and it just locked something. I don't know exactly what it did. And there is a spring on the back which actually, no, it doesn't seem to focus really, which actually pulls it back when it's de-energized. In here there is a infrared detector, infrared mechanism, um, probably for detecting a, when a paper is inserted or something. And you can actually see my hands are getting kind of messy because we are going, to, we are getting to the part where actual toner is spilled and stuff, so it tends to get kind of messy here. These are just snapped in. And one thing that I always like to take out are the springs. There is one beneath, beneath here because you never know when you need them and if you don't collect them all you'll never have the size you, you need uh, whenever you need it. So here we have the actual power supply that I just took out. It's a very nice design. You can see the power comes in here. Here's the power on switch. And actually it has a nice silk print. It's a single sided board. But we're going to take a close look at that later. And now I'm just going to dismantle the remaining components. I'm really interested in where the actual fuser is. You can see these are the high power components that connected to the PCB and this is probably where the fuser is.
So this is actually the fuser unit. Um, looks a bit different than what I had seen in other laser printers and what this does is basically it heats up and the toner that has been put on the paper is heated up and it is melted so it fuses with the paper. Um, I'm going to take this apart further to see what kind of heating elements they used. So now here we are uh, with the actual heating element probably. I'm a bit puzzled actually. Um, here are the two large connectors um, that we saw on the PCB of the Switchmore power supply. This is one and actually has, it's just a little pigtail. It connects to a different connector and this connector just slides on here. And it really doesn't look like it is um, for transmission of high power. It actually looks like there is just some on-chip, um, probably maybe a thermal probe or something like that, that measures the power. While this here, this m looks much more like um, what uh, you'll be used to um, in... Um, in heating elements, uh, very sturdy connectors, and very thick wires. So this is most likely the heating element. This, I guess, is for sensing. So I actually put the printer back together. As you can tell, it's not really in mint condition anymore. I usually put the stuff that I disassemble back together at least in somewhat the shape that it previously came in because it's just uh, efficient to store it and I put I just glue it together with some duct tape so I can recycle it or put it in the, in the trash in a kind of compact form. So here is just a summary of the parts that we took out. Here's this gearbox probably for paper transport. I really don't know what I'm going to do with that, um, but it's far too neat to just throw it out. Maybe just some weird little toy, I don't know. Um, this mirror here that we took out and the heater which uh, makes the, the toner fuse to the paper. The switch mode's power supply and some additional printer logic on there and the main main CPU board here, some RAM, a uh, stepper motor, some springs, some um, mechanical actuators, magnets, a fan, and of course the all-important laser unit, and a whole truckload of screws. So as I promised that we were going to take a closer look at the board, here it is actually again. This is the switchboard power supply. So the power supply first, you will immediately notice the large filter capacitor. And here is a relay. I'm guessing this is for switching on and off the uh, heater unit actually. You see some um, power uh, semiconductors here and here and here mounted onto heatsinks. 
Actually on the silk screen you can very nicely see that there is a galvanic separation of the primary from the secondary side and actually the components which connect both those are optocouplers here and here and here and here is a transformer so basically the primary is completely galvanic galvanically separate from the secondary if we look up here you, we will see some more transformers here I'm guessing those are also used in a switch mode power supply that generates some uh, different voltages needed throughout the whole circuit. Here this is a BA10339 uh, just from the name I'm guessing this is a quad comparator probably equivalent to the LM339 because actually on this side of the board there is a BA10324A so I'm kind of guessing this is a quad comparator LM324 equivalent. One thing that is curious is that here and here and here there is little photoelectric barriers. I really don't know what exactly they do. Basically it's an IR transmitting diode and an IR receiving diode in the same housing. And judging from the arrows that are printed here, I'm guessing this is actually the sender and this is the receiver. Not 100% sure though. Then over here you will see a CPU, it's a RH4020701, I'm guessing this is just some custom made, I couldn't find anything on the internet and the appropriate quartz for that. And I think that's most of the interesting stuff for the switch mode power supply. So now, moving towards the main CPU board as I just briefly discussed when we first dismantled it. It's an i960 Intel CPU um, with some storage which probably keeps the program. Here is a DRAM chip and then there is some 7.4-ish logic everywhere. Those are buffers line drivers. So this is the enlarged view. You can nicely see the CPU and the quartz which generates the 48 megahertz um, clock for the CPU and then there's two chips which I really can't recognize um, but judging from how they're connected I'm assuming that they are um, EEPROM in the previous uh, video I, I said flash I just for a second appeared to have forgotten on how old this printer is um, the reason why I'm guessing it's flash is that Although I cannot Google any information here, there is one thing that strikes me. It's the UPD23C160. And actually, there is a whole uh, EEPROM series which has uh, identifiers like that. There is a C, and the digits after that uh, signify how large actually the whole thing is. So. This is just an educated guess on my part, might be wrong. Here is a DRAM chip that actually uh, I could find some documentation for. It's a 60 nanosecond chip. And then here on this side of the board there is just uh, the regular uh, buffers, line drivers that you would expect in a old RAM interface like this one here. Actually, uh, one thing that I found interesting is the IR interface here on that side. It's probably a receiver and a transmitter um, in just uh, one casing. I'm going to, to solder that out and take a close look, maybe see if I can get it to do something halfway useful. And just for completion, on this side there's the transceivers. Um, obviously there is the large Centronics port. This one here I've never seen before. I don't know what it is. And this one is actually a PS2-ish connector and I think what it does is it enables the printer to be accessed via RS-485 because what comes right here is a MAX-491 which is actually a RS-485 transceiver. 
And here is the stepper motor PCB that we took out before. One thing that I didn't realize before is that this has actually a uh, stepper motor controller on here with a separate heatsink and actually also a quartz here. So this is most likely um, controlled in a very high level manner and I'm going to see what I can do with that. So this is actually the whole laser unit again. Here is the laser diode. A word of caution before I say anything else. This laser diode um, is probably quite dangerous because it will in all likelihood not emit visible light. So if you try to play with that and you think it's not working but it's emitting a beam, you'll probably notice when it's too late and that is when you're blind on one eye at least. So please be very careful with operating these. I don't actually operate those myself because it's just not worth the risk. On the whole, whole other stuff here, again, as I mentioned, uh, we have this rotating mirror which um, deflects the laser beam on different pieces uh, of the sheet of paper. This probably is a BLDC controller for the BLDC brushless motor that is actually running this here. And probably some hall sensors somewhere so it can detect uh, when it actually has finished a whole rotation so it knows where the mirror is. So to be able to demonstrate safely how this laser unit works, I actually um, took, um, I screwed off this uh, laser unit, the original laser unit, and I drilled a hole on this side so I could basically insert a laser, laser beam uh, through the casing here. I needed to drill the hole because it may not be at an angle. So I'm going to insert the laser beam here, let it hit this optical unit and let it hit the mirror and you will be able to see how it actually behaves. You will see a beam of light which travels along here when I rotate the whole laser. It's just a bit tricky to get this set up right but this should do it. Okay, so I'm just moving it around. You should see how the laser beam moves when I move the mirror. And basically what, uh, what you need to just uh, imagine right now is that the laser beam is turned on and off very fast. So basically the laser printer knows where the laser is at the moment and it's like this point. Do we need to set a point here? No, we don't. We just turn the laser point off. It just travels on to the next point. Do we need to set a point here? Yeah, turns it on. Do we need to set a point here? Yeah, we, we need to turn it on and so on. So basically um, by this uh, you can get a um, you can get the image transferred onto the paper um, in very, very rough terms. So thank you again for watching the video and um, I hope you enjoyed it uh, until uh, sometime. Bye.